What's up, guys? Welcome back to Bible Fun with the Dunn. Today, we're in Job chapter 20. Let's get started. All right, so today we hear from Zophar for the second time, and he talks a lot about how the wicked are going to suffer. In verses 1 through 11, he says the wicked are going to perish forever. In verses 12 through 19, he says the wicked will experience God's wrath. In verses 20 through 29, he says the wicked will be destroyed and so basically, Zophar still thinks that God is judging Job for sin. Yeah, I think we could say, you know, Zophar's premise, or Zophar's premise is that the, the wicked only prosper um, temporarily before they're destroyed. If you go through all the points of the wicked, he says their life is brief, their pleasure is temporary, and their death is painful. Uh, but what you notice is they keep coming back to these same arguments. Every time anybody says anything, they're just, there's an old term for this. They're just beating a dead horse. <laughs> and so like the horse is not going to go anywhere. They're, they're, they're just not going to get anything. And so in verse four, Zophar is going all the way back to Adam. He says, do you not know this of old since man was placed on earth? He's saying, Everybody knows this, Job. Why are you so ignorant of what's going on? And, and you know, Job has told him time and time again, he said, guys, I, I know what you know, but I also know now some things from experience that you don't. And But listen, nobody is listening to anybody. By the way, whether it is at home, at school, in the government, or in Job's book, if nobody listens to anybody, guess what? We are not learning anything. Um, also, look in verse number two. It says, therefore, my anxious thoughts make me answer because of the turmoil within me. Um, I want to just kind of give you a reminder here. You ought to put in the, the margin of your Bible. You know, be careful that you're not ruled by feelings. Mm. So far, is, he's, he is answering <laughs> out. Yeah, he's answering out of just how he feels. He's, he's not there to comfort. The goal is not help. The goal is not comfort anymore. He is personally offended by Job's words, and uh, this is an attack on him. Tony Evans said it like this. He said, Zophar was partly true in saying that the wicked only last for a season and eventually face God's judgment. But that season to us feels like it can last a really long time when wicked people enjoy a life of wealth and ease. But that, in fact, is why we have to keep a kingdom perspective on life so that we don't get caught up in chasing the stuff on earth instead of living for eternity. Now, I also think that when we're reading all of this, whereas sinners do, like us, we all deserve judgment. We all deserve God's wrath. Matter of fact, the book of Romans says that we are enemies of God and we did deserve his wrath. Zophar is not wrong about that. But he's, he's not remembering that God is a father who is, the Bible characterizes as long-suffering. Zophar did not account for, and here's, and here's what he's missing. In all of his theology, he's missing a component of grace. He is right that sin deserves wrath and sin deserves destruction and sin deserves hell. He's right in that. But he doesn't yet understand grace. And friends... Grace is what changes this whole thing for us. Now, that's just the best part. Now, not only did he miss out on the fact that Job had done nothing to deserve this, Job was still a sinner. They're all still sinners. We're all still sinners. But Zophar didn't yet have a concept of grace. So not only should we not act like him presumptuously to presume we know what somebody else is going through, we also should act as people who understand grace. Consider a prime example of the flow of Zophar's argument. It does not end where, where what we know is true. Jesus was and is the perfect son of God, and yet he died young and he died violently. Zophar is going to say that, that the wicked will die young and that the good will die old. And that, that the length of life is determined on how good you are and the type of death is going to be determined by the things you do. But that doesn't count for Jesus. He died young and he died violently he and he was best. perfect. Mm -hmm. So when we read through this, we need to be adding into what we understand. We need to be adding it into this story. 
Grace changes everything. Jesus teaches us everything. And it's to him we look, him we trust, and him we follow. All right? Don't be so far. Don't be mean. Okay? All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.